just no going with that. Welcome to day 29 of 365. This is Delene McIntosh and today we're going to be going through the next in our Principles of Art. I'm going to be combining variety and unity, which is one principle, with scale, which is another principle. So we'll cover two of them today because they're two very quick lessons. So we can just put them both into one day. We're going to have a look at three little examples. I've just got some various little clip arts here to show you just as an example of what I'm talking about. In the first example, we have three little pots of flowers. Now this would be considered bad because we've got lots of unity, but we don't have very much variety. They're all the same thing. We also have a little bit of height going on here above the tulips, but otherwise everything else is pretty much the same size. So again, variety is a little bit of an issue with this particular little composition. And our second little composition we have a problem with unity. Mushrooms don't belong with teacups and teapots on a, on a tea table. So this mushroom is sort of a little bit out of place. We've got variety, but not enough unity. It just, just doesn't gel very well. Here in this bottom composition is the kind of thing we're looking for. We've got plenty of unity because a teacup and a teapot and a vase of flowers could well belong on a tea table. And we have plenty of variety in various different forms. We've got the heart of the tulip vase and we've got the teacup that's slightly lower and the teapot that's slightly higher. So we've got a flowing line around the composition. We've also got a little bit of space between the two of them which creates a little bit of an unbalanced situation. So of the three of them, the bottom one is by far the better. We've got a lot of harmony going on here because the unity is, is maintained, but we've got enough variety to keep our interest in the game. Right, I'm back. Um, I'm going to be talking about scale now. Um, I want to just draw your attention to how important scale is in a painting or in a drawing. Now, why is scale important in a drawing or a painting, of course? Well, what we have here on our screen, just as by way of demonstration, is what looks like a chocolate ball. So one might assume that it's quite small because it looks like chocolate. But it could in fact be just about any ball and just about any size. So there's not a lot of information here that helps us to understand quite how large or how small this ball is. Well, what if I do that? All of a sudden, that's rather a small ball. Either that or it's a very big cat. And if I do that, now it's a huge ball, twice the size of a man almost. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here is quite how important scale is to your elements. To have an element on its own like this leaves the viewer pretty much guessing exactly what this is and how big it is and it's difficult to make sense of it. You need context in a painting that's got a very obvious single element to be able to show the viewer exactly how big that element and what it actually is. Please, if you've enjoyed this, please like and share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So I thank you so much for, for joining me in day 29 and I will see you tomorrow in day 30. Thanks again. Bye. That's what you want to do. Yeah.